of quiet time on the channel, spending some time doing some uh, some writing, less time talking about it, more time doing it. I've discovered a few things about writing, and I'll share those with you today. One thing helps writing is not being on social media as much. You don't spend as much time hanging out on Twitter or Facebook or any of that stuff, especially when Facebook is super depressing, political, and scary. Uh, that's a good reason to be away from it. You just focus more on kind of like the facets of the story that you're telling. It just keeps you more in tune with that. I've also come to the realization that I am a better writer if I am reading or listening to an audiobook. Fiction, like fictional prose. It could be nonfiction as long as it's the writing is kind of like in that prosy fictional space. I've been listening to the audiobook of 112263, which is one of my favorite Stephen King books of ever and uh, timely, considering that it's the end of November. I just really love that book. It's my third time going through it. This is the first time I've listened to the audiobook, and it's quite good, except that the narrator has a tendency. I'm, I think his Russian accent's a little... Mm. And I also take issue with uh, when he, he he makes people a little too cry-y sometimes. His crying voice is a little distracting, and I some of the times I feel like he's doing it where he shouldn't be doing it. And that's one of the things I like about Stephen King a lot, is like those those moments that are that are actually heartbreaking. He doesn't say things like, this is heartbreaking or whatever. He just says the thing. And based on the context and the characters that you've come to love, it breaks your heart. Just him writing the simple what is happening is more effective than, than him trying to describe why this thing is sad or why this thing is horrifying. And he does that anyway. Anyway, so listening to audiobooks definitely helps my writing process. And then just making sure to set aside the time to sit and do the writing. It's also helped that Eliza has is, is going through grad school right now and she's had to devote her... Uh, some, some serious time to homework. So she's had to do her homework time while I've been doing my work at home time. <laughs> Working on the script for episode 10, the final Platoon of Power Squadron episode. Right here, guys. Pops 10. I'm not going to say the title of it yet, other than the fact that it's not Hypothesis the 10th, because we've, we've had all the hypothesis. What comes after a hypothesis, you guys? A conclusion. Pops 10 conclusion, subtitle absent, because I'm not convinced that this is it yet. And uh, I will hear back from others, and then I will know. Any any of you who follow me on Twitter, or Instagram, uh, or Facebook, I guess since the Twitter bounces to Facebook, um, have already kind of seen the evidence of it, seen the draft one, uh, 112715. 
draft one is the shortest turnaround between draft one and draft two because what I'm doing right now is just going through and catching typos. And I catch them better on paper than I do on the screen. If history is correct, then uh, the Wolf Brothers, Ryan and David, will be the first to actually read the full thing, which is going to be quite a test this time. It is the longest of the scripts. I kept telling people it was going to be shorter than the other scripts, and everyone's like, no, it's not. No, they just keep getting longer, Jake. They were right. First draft is 99 pages, but a bitch ain't one. I'm sorry. That was a rap lyric, in case you're not familiar with the lyrics of 99 problems. It's not, that's, you don't need to worry about that. In the three weeks since I've last spoken with you, before I started listening to 112263, I was listening to podcasts by writers. And though those are inspirational and really interesting, they're not necessarily helpful to being in writing mode. However, before I got into writing mode, uh, a couple of these podcasts were fascinating. If you want to check them out, one, you have to be a paid subscriber, like $2.99 a month, I think, to the Script Notes podcast. You can find that at johnaugust.com. They did an interview with Drew Goddard, who's awesome. Some of my favorite TV shows ever. He's been on a lot of those writing staffs. And he wrote and directed Cameron in the Woods. Come on, was the showrunner on this. And, of course, he was the screenwriter for this. So, guy I respect a lot. He was interviewed by John August of the Script Notes podcast, and the audio of it is terrible, but it's amazing about breaking into the industry. It's all about being the person who stays latest. He endured himself to Joss, Joss Whedon, by being the one who would always stay late. Everybody else would go home to their families and everything, and he was just a young guy. He was a young guy. He would be the only one in the office, and Joss would be like, well, just come down to, because Joss was directing and kind of running Firefly at the same time as they were breaking Buffy and Angel stories. So he'd be like, just come on down to Firefly. And he'd sit there by the monitor. And so between setups and whatever, Joss would come and they would just break stories for Buffy together. And just being the person who stays latest, stays longest, that is how he became one of the most uh, currently powerful writers in the industry. So very important lesson. Also, this podcast does not cost any money to listen to. The Q&A with Jeff Goldsmith, and in this case, it's Aaron Sorkin, another writer that I love. I, I watch this movie. He wrote that. I watch it at least once a year. He's also written a gajillion things, TV and film. So again, these are writers who write in a lot of mediums and who are uh, very great at dialogue, which is kind of a thing that I am really drawn to. Sorkin was on the Q&A with Jeff Goldsmith. There's a, there'll be a link to that and a link to, I guess, johnaugust.com if you want to get into the script notes thing. Listening to writers talk about their process, and Q&A with Jeff Goldsmith is all about writer process. So all of those writers of all these screenplays, he sits down with them in front of an audience and takes questions and learns all about their pro process. What you come away with is that nobody's process is the same. Like, all everybody's like, how do you do it? How do you come up with your ideas? How do you do this thing? Everybody's process for every bit of the process is different. And it's just dependent upon what works for you. Like, I prefer to work in coffee shops. We saw a little bit of that this week. But most of the second half of Pop's episode 10 script, I've been writing that script in between things since last spring. So, like, I just finally sat down. And over the last few weeks of time lapse, you've watched me write the last third of it, probably. Everybody's process is different. And even though I prefer to write in coffee shops, I can write in the apartment if that's the thing to do. And But that's my process. Just sitting there and waiting for it to happen. What do I need to accomplish in this scene? Write the scene. What does this scene need to do in order to advance the story? Write that scene. Uh, what have we not heard from yet? Oh, we'll go back and write for these characters. Put that scene here, you know? And that's my process. Just I know where I am, where I want to go, and what makes sense to get me there. Personal process. Every writer's process is personal. That's the Aaron Sorkin. Uh, he's talking about uh, writing Steve Jobs. And speaking of that, I got tired of not writing movie reviews. So below that will be a link to three movie reviews that I wrote um, just in my new format, talking about going to see movies in the theaters. I wrote a review for Crimson Peak, which I loved. Uh, I wrote a review for Steve Jobs, which I thought was pretty good, and a review of Room, which is a really heavy drama. Um, based on a book. Those are three movie reviews that I've written recently in case you feel like checking in on reviews. I hope if you celebrate Thanksgiving that you had a happy one. That's the Pops logo. I'll see you in a week. Bye.